Publix out there throwing darts at a board, sport. I don't throw darts at a board. I bet on sure things. Read Sun Tzu, The Art of War. Every battle is won before it's ever fought. Think about it. You're not as smart as I thought you were, buddy boy. You ever wonder why fund managers can't beat the S&P 500? Because they're sheep. And sheep get slaughtered. This clip is from the 1987 movie Wall Street, where Michael Douglas playing Gordon Gecko is lecturing Charlie Sheen's character Bud Fox, and he's summarizing from the famous Sun Tzu book, The Art of War. My name is Gary Cars, and I have been publishing InvestorHome.com since 1996. And I'm the author of the new book and website, The Peaceful Investor. And with that clip in mind, I'm going to offer my explanation on why index funds are killing actively managed funds. Dean has some really interesting language. Uh, I'm not saying that Gordon Gecko was wrong regarding his statement implying the portfolio managers are sheep that follow the herd. But that's not the primary reason that managers underperform indexes and index funds. So the language here uh, actually lifted from an article in the LA Times 1997 where David O'Leary was quoted, there is a crisis in the industry in that index funds are killing the actively managed funds. I recently rediscovered that quote on a web page that I posted in 1997 titled The Magic Number, which discussed the hunt by the Vanguard Index Fund in pursuit of Fidelity's Magellan Fund for the title of the largest mutual fund. I was really writing about the broader significance, uh, and I wrote like uh, I wrote then, like it or not, and there are a lot of people in the investment business who won't like it, if and when the 500 portfolio passes Magellan, it will be a historic event for the mutual fund industry. Uh, the Vanguard 500 index fund was originally introduced in 1996, and in fact, it started slowly, and it wasn't until 1995 that the fund passed $10 billion in assets. Um, I updated the, that race for about three years, and the Vanguard Index Fund officially passed Magellan in April of 2000, of April 2000, when it had $104.8 billion in assets. Uh, of course, since then, uh, unfortunately, Jack Bogle passed away in 2000, uh, early 2019. But uh, by, the, by the end of 2018, uh, Vanguard not only had the largest mutual fund, they, had, they managed the three largest U.S. mutual funds, stock mutual funds, and the three largest U.S. bond funds. And that was according to the Wall Street Journal's end of the year rankings. Um, so initially, some people called the index fund Bogle's folly, but Jack Bogle got the last laugh for sure and millions of investors have benefited from his work. Of course, it's not just Vanguard. Uh, many others were developing passive investment options. And in September of 2019, John Gittleson at Bloomberg published an article titled, End of an Era, Passive Equity Funds Surpass Active in Epic Shift. Uh, and he noted that based on Morningstar's data, passive US index equity fund assets exceeded active equity index fund funds as of the end of August 2019. Uh, so that's the background, the broader background. Uh, back to the question, why are index funds killing actively managed funds? Now, there really isn't a lack of active funds. Uh, there are thousands of them. Uh, there always will be active funds. Uh, but as we can see in this chart from the Investment Company Institute, Index mutual funds and ETFs are drawing tons of money in aggregate, uh, and active funds are hemorrhaging assets. Um, now, in general, you can go into long discussions about probabilities and odds of outperforming indexes. About 60% of active funds tend to underperform indexes over a one-year period, 70% over five years, about 80% underperform over 10 years. And when you go out 20, 30 years, you're looking at, uh, you're getting to like 90% of active managers that are going to underperform their benchmarks. Now, the numbers depend on uh, multiple factors, uh, the expected return, the volatility uh, correlation. Uh, but the most relevant factor is actually the manager's cost. Uh, so the higher the cost, the less likely a manager is to outperform an index. 
Um, the killing really refers to performance, not necessarily killing them as in wiping them out because there are so many active managers and there still will be. Uh, there will always be people attempting to beat the indexes, but performance-wise, they're getting killed. Explanation why index funds outperform and kill active funds is actually simple mathematics and logic. Indexing an asset class, for instance, buying the US, entire US stock market or the global stock market effectively allows an investor to disentangle or separate the investment activity in buying stocks from the speculation inherent in trying to beat the market in specific stocks or funds or strategies. Uh, so in simple language, indexing effectively allows an investor to separate investing from speculating. Now, this is not my original idea or explanation. There are no universally accepted definitions of investment and speculation, but I refer to an article uh, from Martin, Marty Fridson published in the, the fall 1993 issue of the Journal of Portfolio Management titled, Exactly What Do You Mean By Speculation? And he went over more than 20 definitions and he proposed uh, a term subdiversification, uh, which is effectively any ownership of assets other than a fully diversified market portfolio. And, uh, you know, effectively he says that subdiversification is speculation. Uh, you're trying to beat the market and that's not no longer an investment activity. Now, keep in mind that before 1976, when Jack Bogle and others created index funds, if you wanted to buy individual stocks uh, or you wanted to buy stocks in general, you had to buy individual stocks or mutual funds or closed end funds. Uh, now those stocks or whatever portfolio you have is going to have some correlation with the market. Uh, and in fact, most stocks move more in correlation with the market than uh, separate from the market. Now that's referred to uh, by most people as beta. Uh, a stock that has a you know a beta of close to one tends to move up and down with the market. Less than one moves less than the market. Some stocks move more than the market, um, and they have more than a one of beta. Uh, but beta is not perfect, and it can change over time. But uh, put another way, let's say you buy an individual stock. Uh, every year, some stocks multiply, and some uh, some go bankrupt. So in other words, if you invest in one stock, you could make several times your money, or you could lose it all. Um, you effectively have a lot of variability, but if you buy the market through an index fund, you would have gotten uh, a lot less vol var vol variability historically, uh, and you would have returned about 9% in U.S. stocks or about... Another perspective, uh, Rick Ferry has also summarized that active investing is uncompensated risk. In other words, an active investor is taking risk by deviating from the broad index, and rather than increasing your returns, and odds of beating the market, the higher your cost, the more risk and weaker your expected returns. Laureate Paul Samuelson is actually credited with the idea of the index fund, but in a 2005 speech, Samuelson actually ranked Bogle's index fund creation uh, along with the invention of the wheel, the alphabet, the Gutenberg press, and wine and cheese. Uh, in other words, the creation of the index fund in the investment in industry uh, really was a game changer and it was uh, analogous to the creation of a better mousetrap. Back to the clip from Wall Street, ironically the Sun Tzu argument that every war is won or lost before it's fought is actually quite applicable to the battle between passive and active managers. It's actually decided before it starts because mathematically passive investors always beat active investors in aggregate when measured correctly. Uh, yes, some managers beat the index, but that's not the question. The question is whether the average active manager and the aggregate of active managers can beat an appropriately measured passive fund or index. And the answer is no. Uh, every once in a while, we see arguments that active managers can or should beat index funds. Uh, and to most of those arguments, it's reasonable to respond. Not as smart as I thought you were, buddy boy. The proof of this was documented by Nobel laureate Bill Sharp in his paper, The Arithmetic of Active Management. So if you have a problem with that conclusion, uh, you need to read that and address that before you go further. Uh, regarding the uh, Wall Street quote that managers are sheep and sheep get slaughtered, um, there, there is some truth to that, as I mentioned, and I document much of that. Uh, in chapter 11 of uh, Peaceful Investor, 
um, the herd behavior of individual investors, advisors, and institutional investors we've known about for a long time. Research goes back to 1995. Uh, uh, Odin and Barber have written a lot of papers that have gotten a lot of quotes. Um, and there are some other discussions as well uh, that evolve from this discussion regarding uh, risk factors and stock market anomalies. I'm not going to get into them because I've gone on too long with this video already. Uh, and the debate about the efficient market hypothesis and whether the markets are efficient doesn't really affect the mathematics. Costs are cost and averages are averages. So regardless of how efficient the markets are, it's a discussion for another day, uh, active managers are going to underperform passive managers. If you're interested in reading more about these topics, uh, see my website, somegames.com, investorhome.com, or of course, I have uh, summarized my investing advice in, uh, in The Peaceful Investor, where I argue that uh, for most investors, the goal is not sport or entertainment. Uh, the objective is to invest to meet your goals with as little risk as possible uh, so you can live a peaceful financial life. Thanks for watching.